So moving inside, before we go inside, we always check our equipment outside, especially the CO2 meters. We want to see a number of about 400, right, outside. Otherwise, the meter's not working right, and you probably need to do a calibration. So it's good to know what's outside. Now, if you're next to a busy highway or a busy intersection or some other source of combustion, you may have a higher outside level, and you'll want to take that into account as you make measurements inside and adjust those measurements to allow for that, that higher outside air. Walking into the building, we want to see a walk-off system to help keep that building clean. And we like to see a three-stage system where you've got a coarse mat, a finer mat, and finally a nice walk-off mat that takes the final particles off the feet, and then a hard surface that doesn't stay damp year-round. So we like to see removable uh, walk-off mats so they can be taken out, laundered, and put back in so they don't stay filthy for an entire school year. We want to stop the dirt at the door. Clearly, they're using the primary carpet here as a walk-off mat. I'm not sure you can keep that thoroughly cleaned on a day-to-day -day basis. Another walk-off mat. This is a, a rubber-backed mat, but it's sitting right on top of the primary carpet. So that tends to trap that moisture into that primary carpet and create a compost pile, which is probably not the best way to, to run a classroom. We want to see good drainage. Which way is that sidewalk tilting? We know that water runs downhill. Okay, walk-off mats, they should be an added attraction, not an excuse to, to not do good maintenance on the, on the custodial side. So you can see the amount of dirt that's built up around the walk-off mat. So the walk-off mat's doing its job, but we need to, to also pick up the pieces on the other side of it. Let's look at offices, workrooms, staff rooms, and other areas. When we go to the office, we get the inside information. The office people sometimes have the, the informal information about, oh, so-and-so's got a concern, or they've missed a lot of school, or there's problems down here. So that gives us a clue to where to go look and maybe some questions to ask and some things to, to investigate. Go to the, the staff room. Oftentimes, the refrigerator in the staff room is kind of no man's land. The custodians say, well, that's not, I don't deal with that. And the staff don't have the time or the inclination or maybe the awareness to check for the drip pan. And we find some pretty fantastic things in the drip pans under these refrigerators. Again, it's not a glamorous thing to do, but it's something that has to be done on a routine basis. There's a, an air vent that's covered by the refrigerator. Unvented megacopier. If you have copiers that are used a lot, they need to probably be vented to the outside if the same people are being exposed. If you just walk in and make a few copies, you go back to the safety of your own classroom, probably not much exposure. We just don't want to see that chronic exposure to, to these photocopiers and other pieces of equipment. Laminators, they put off a lot of uh, pollutants, so we want to make sure they're vented if they're used very much. Again, check our airflow around some of these known hazard spots. Another tunnel with an asbestos caution sign on it. Combustion byproducts. You can see from this slide that that flue has not been working properly. Probably due to pressures where air was being pulled down that flue by pressures in the building, and then the exhaust couldn't go outside. It was just spread through the building. So there's a clue that there's something not working right. So we need to uh, encourage schools to get carbon monoxide alarms or detectors so we can measure this invisible odorless gas so we're not exposing people. Look for uh, your, your air handling equipment. If you've got air conditioning, you've got condensate pans, drip pans, and we don't want those to be filled with algae or slime and bacteria and mold. We need to keep these things clean and as dry as we can, make sure they drain properly. Filters. Filters are important. They only work as well as how they're installed. If there's a big air gap, guess what? Particles take the path of least resistance, just like students. <laughs> so the particles are going to go right around that filter, and if you never have to change them, they're not working. So it's a clue. That's why we want documentation. 
Filters should be getting dirty if they're working, but we need to change them before they uh, get completely plugged, otherwise you're not getting the fresh air you need. And it also impacts your energy efficiency because you're heating those elements, but you're not getting air, th you're not getting the, the, the warm air to the people or the cool air to the people. So it, it's cutting down on your energy efficiency. Look around for uh, mold food in the presence of moisture. Now, it's okay if things get wet in your building as long as you dry it right away and you keep it away from the mold food. If you've got a leak, get the mold food away from the leak and then just keep it mopped up until you can get the, the leak fixed. But don't leave your mold food wet. Again, just add water, you're going to get mold. Sometimes the mold's not obvious. You don't know until you look. Sometimes we have to, to do a little bit of uh, surgery to check it out. One handy way to do that is a blank switch plate. You can make a hole in the wall, look in there, cover it with a blank switch plate. You don't have to paint, do any patchwork. Most people don't complain about a, a, a switch plate. We know that carpets are put into schools oftentimes to hide the dirt. Carpets contain a huge amount of pollutants. The problem is when a custodian cleans, they just clean for the, 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 the big chunks the spitballs, the paper clip, the, the gum wrapper, the cookie crumb. You don't get all the dirt out. They don't have time. They're not allowed that much time. We also know that our vacuum cleaners can spray a lot of particles out of the back end if they don't have a high efficiency particle filter installed. We see some vacuums that are just a cloth sack. They do catch the paper clip, but there's dust just coming out of the back of these. And the thing that you need to keep in mind is that these tiny particles take days to settle out. They're not settled out by the next morning when people come into that classroom. They're in the air for days. And these are the little particles that can cause a lot of health problems. So unless we're using good vacuuming equipment, we could be making things worse. We look for harsh chemicals, industrial strength cleaners, solvents, things that say keep away from children, use in a well-ventilated area you know, may, may cause eye and skin irritation. Well, let's, we can switch to things that are friendlier for our people in our buildings. We like to see people going for the green cleaning products that are much more uh, benign. And you can take a whole closet full of chemicals and replace them with like four different products and keep a building clean. You can make it simple and it's pretty easy to switch to that, those products and they're pretty well tested these days. We look for air going from clean to dirty, right? So you don't know unless you look. Here's an office. <laughs> and guess how many, when the last time someone took a shower in this, in this office? Well, that trap could be dry. These traps have a water collection to keep the sewer gas out. If you don't put water in there on a frequent basis, it's going to dry out and you can get sewer odors in your building and those are contaminants. It's just a water trap. So you need to fill those on a regular basis.